Praise the Lord. Now we come to an exciting time of the service. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. There's, n there's nothing like the word of the Lord. God Almighty has revealed who he is. God Almighty has revealed his plan, his purpose, what he's doing. He has revealed his character. He has revealed his spirit. He has revealed the Savior. And in it, all that revelation, he has also, by the word, revealed who we are and who we're not. You come to find, as you read scripture, you come to find out real quick that we're not much like him until he does something in our life. True? We're not too much. You read scripture and you read that Old Testament and you're going to see a character come forth, human nature come forth, that has nothing to do with him. My wife and I, I oftentimes refer to it as HN, human nature. HN, if you ever hear me say HN, what I'm referring to is human nature. That's when problems develop. That's when strife comes. That's when jealousy kicks in, when envy arises, when pride lifts up, when you see arrogance, when you see all kinds of things develop that you just kind of draw back from. HN, human nature is at play. Not holy nature, human nature. That's what we're seeing oftentimes in, that is destroying people's marriages, destroying churches, destroying governments, destroying nations. That's what you see at play even in our own nation now, is the rise of human nature. And human nature is always in league with that which is not God. Hear me now. Human nature, flesh nature, is always in league with that spirit that is not God. It works in harmony with. It works in subjection to. It works in such a way that is never, ever going to produce holiness or be holy. Ever. How often? Ever. Never. Ever. Forever. Never. I think we got that point, right? So when we're looking for, for, for uh, what God's going to do in our life, you can, I can assure you of this, and you need to know this, that God's Holy Spirit will never work through or for the flesh nature. God's Holy Spirit will never work through or for the flesh nature, the human nature. But there is a spirit that is out there, a chief ruler of this age, that does work through and for the flesh nature. And the Bible calls him Satan, the adversary, the devil, the deceiver. All these words that currently we don't want to use, and yet TV programs all the time are using the word demon. And yet when you use them in church, people draw back. But if it's on a, on a TV program, kids are like this. That's human nature wanting to be in league with. Wanting to see what you can empower the human nature with. What can you empower me with? What influence can I have? God's Holy Spirit is seeking to produce holiness. The devilish, evil spirits are always at work to bring us down the road of, of the flesh nature. Because it always leads to the abyss. It always leads to the wrath of God. It always leads where he can paint God as a picture of wrath. He can paint God as a picture of your ogre, your taskmaster hanging over you, when in actuality that's him. Does that make sense? Now, if you would, turn in your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter, chapter 2. A powerful portion of scripture that Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus. The church there named, or the people there named Ephesians. So he's writing to the church in Ephesus, or the letter, epistle means letter, he's writing to the church in Ephesus, or we call it Ephesians. And it says in these first three verses, verse 1, 2, and 3, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1, 2, and 3, says this, New King James, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. Powerful portion of scripture. It says in, the, in, in other translations, once you were dead, 
doomed forever because of your sins. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? Once you were dead, doomed forever of your many sins. The NIV would read, as for you, you were dead in the transgressions of sins. I think we get the point, right? That sin, transgressions, trespasses against God have produced death in our lives. All of human nature. Not like, oh, it's just this part or those or it's just this nation or that kind of people. Or, or you know, that old saying that I use is that, well, at least I'm not as bad as... You know, death will come to them. They're under the judgment of God, but I'm not as bad as them, so I'm okay. See, when we start comparing ourselves among ourselves, it always leads to problems. When we start comparing ourselves to the Holy One, we realize we're cut off. And all of a sudden we cry out, save me. We were dead. Not just, oh, that, I'm talking about myself. No, see, I'm pastor, I'm talking about you. Oh, no, we're the church, so we're talking about them. No, we're talking about all of us, everyone, everywhere, all nations, all time, all people, everyone, always, everyone was what? Once you were dead. He says you were dead in trespasses and sins. Now, for myself personally, and I think I'm speaking for you, I have seen death and I have seen life. I like life. It's, it's, I like life. I, I think it's a whole lot more fun. I've seen death and I've seen life. Death, I've seen inactivity. I've seen a lack of energy among them. I've seen a lack of force and influence among them. I've seen no power in death. There's a power of death, but there's no power in death. In this, I've been to funerals, I've been to gravesides, I've been to cemeteries, I've done funerals, I've seen the, the, the body before me, I've seen dead animals on the side of the road, I've seen dead animals in the woods, and I've seen death, and I can tell you this, it doesn't look like fun. And you can never grow a church if people are dead. What do you need? Life. You never go, I've, when I've had to get something done around the house or here, I've never gone to the local cemetery, you need help. Is there anyone who can help me? The answer is not even remotely possible. If one of them does answer, it's not them. <laughs> True? If one of them, if you may call it grandma, but I tell you, it's not grandma. You may call it uncle and auntie, but I can assure you of this, it's not. You may call it this and that, and it may be, quote unquote, familiar to you. But there's an evil spirit behind it. God will never come to you that way, ever come to you that way. But today we have all kinds of paranormal shows. We have all kinds of things breaking down the barriers so that even little children are being taught that you have a gift. You have something special coming out of your life. We're going to nurture it. We're going to show it the way, a way that you can use it and help people. Don't be afraid of those voices. That's what's going on today. All kinds of comic books, all kinds of TV shows, all kinds of mov movies. Everything taking place. People are going gaga over it. Drawing people into the abyss of wickedness. More unbelief coming alive every day. Dead is dead. Now, I know this doesn't sound like a very encouraging message thus far. But hear me now. Dead is dead. It doesn't matter. We can talk about, do you remember Wilt Chamberlain when he, when he got all of those baskets and all those points and the great stats that he still holds? And What a fabulous basketball player. Do you think Wilt cares today? No. Why? Dead is dead. Dead is dead. Do you remember that hero who fell on the grenade? Do you remember how he saved all those lives? Boy, let's just talk about how marvelous and read the book and it really will move you emotionally. He doesn't care. Dead is dead. When you're dead, you're dead. Make sure you write that down. <laughs> It 
It's so simple, is it not? And yet the truth of it is, we talk about all kinds of glowing stories and all kinds of things of what great uh, obituaries. You can go to the paper and read, avid golfer. He's dead and he doesn't care. The only one we're talking about and a day later it's gone, it's history and no one's going to look back. Avid golfer, avid huntsman, avid fisherman, avid this, avid that, doesn't matter. He's avid dead. <laughs> dead is dead. How were we dead? In trespasses and sins. Transgressions. Stepping across against God, not caring for God, not seeking the things of God, not wanting God. Human nature has been cut off. All of human nature is under the hand of God's wrath. The judgment came in you, you shall die, everything on you shall die. It came to Adam and everyone and everything that was in the loins of Adam has been subjected to death under eternal judgment. No hope, no place to go. Sad picture for humanity. But God's, here it is, but God's grace intervenes. But God's grace intervenes. God's grace, God's power, He comes in and makes us alive. He quickens our spirit. He ignites us. He causes us to come forth that that which was dead is now alive. Where all of a sudden there's an awareness. All of a sudden there's consciousness. All of a sudden there's an understanding. All of a sudden where I was once blind, I now see. Where I was once dead, I'm now alive. Where I was once poor, I'm now rich. Where now I had no place to go, now I know where I'm going. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. God's grace has intervened in this evil world that's all around us. And people say, how could a good God allow this to happen? When in actuality, if God was exercising just strictly His holiness, we'd all be dead already. We'd all be cut off, buried, and there'd be nothing. But instead, He allows humanity to continue. Why? So that people would be saved. That God Almighty would prove who He is. That God Almighty would come forth with righteousness, with grace, with power, and make us alive so that you and I can be in this room today and deny the old ways and call upon the new and say, God, you are God and there is no other. Or once we might say hallelujah just out of passing, praise the Lord just out of even mockery. But now we say it with meaning and with purpose because God God has put a praise in our hearts. He means something to us because he has birthed us from above. And you he made alive. You, the church, he made alive. You, alive. No longer dead in trespasses and sins. No longer operating our lives with transgression against God. But now a holy nature has come forth. Now a new mind is set. Now all of a sudden we realize that God is doing something in our lives that he says in John chapter 1 that you have the right to be called a child of God. He doesn't just call you a child of God as though to soothe you or, or to make you feel better about yourself and to appeal to some emotional. He's talking about the actual position of who you are. You can have the right to stand before anyone and say, I'm a child of the living God. I only have three children that can come to my home or go anywhere and say, I'm a child of Gary Cody. There's only three in all the world that can stand anywhere and say, I'm a child of Gary Cody. No one else can do that. They may claim it, but they can't, they can't prove it. God Almighty says you have the right because you have been birthed by His very Word. His Word in you. You are now not just adopted, but you have been brought forth into the family of God and He calls you His own and His Word is in you coming alive, proving evidence that you belong to Him. You are not fathered by anyone else there. You are no longer the father uh, uh, under the fathership of, of the uh, father of disobedience, of the father of lies. You're no longer under the father of deception. You're no longer under the father of doubt. You're no longer under the father of this world. You belong to God. So therefore, what's he say? So live like it. Well, that's the struggle, isn't it? That's, now that's the hassle of it all, isn't it? 
Now that becomes, oh, the Bible calls that the battle. Gee, once I, my life seemed to be a whole lot better. I didn't have all these thoughts. Exactly. Now you've got holy thoughts. And your unworthiness is struggling against it. What you are despising is proof of your unworthiness. What you're struggling with, and gee, I just want to go back to this, and I want to go back and do that, and I want to go back and, and wallow in the pig's mud. I want to go back and eat the, the lentils of Egypt. I just want to chew on a stalk of corn. I want to go back to where I was in Egypt. I just want to do what I used to do. Why can't I? Why do you have to be in this fight? Is evidence of your unworthiness of the grace of God. And yet he doesn't remove it, but instead pursues you. Because his word is in you. And turns you around and all of a sudden you repent and you call upon God and you ask him, Lord, come into my life. Make me whole. Make me new. Ignite my passion. Put your love in my heart for my wife. Put your love in my heart for my husband. Put your love in my heart for my children, for my home, for my community. Cause my heart to be at peace and at rest in you, Lord. Put your joy in my heart. I want to praise you. I don't want to squander my praise on that which isn't you. I want holiness. I want love. I want joy. And you're the only one one out there who can give it. And he doesn't give it like the world gives it. He gives it and it's there to stay. He's not going to take it back and say, oh well, you messed up. Pull it away. You may forfeit it, but he won't pull it. In this, verse 2, you once walked according to the course of this world. There is a way that the world operates. All of the world is under the sway of the enemy. The God of this age, the ruler of this age, the magistrate, the one who has all authority over this world. Jesus didn't deny that. He confirmed it. That this world and all of its endeavors and all of its passions and all of its works and all of its vocations and all the things that we hold near and dear and all the plaques and all the awards and all the stats and all the relationships and everything that we endeavor to do and all the amusements and all the entertainment and everything that's going on is under the rulership, the magistrate of one who is not him. He says, this world has nothing in me and I nothing in this world. And the God of this age, the ruler of this age, the devil, the adversary, oh, why do we have to keep talking about him? Because scripture does. Scripture makes it very clear. You can't get through use your book without finding him showing up somewhere. And one of his greatest weapons is to make us not think about him, to not know about him, to not be aware Paul wrote and says that we must be aware. He says we're aware of. We're not, we're not foolish towards. We're not ignorant of his devices. We understand his schemes. We know what he does. We know how he works in our flesh. We know how he tries to draw us away. He knows how he holds that beer bottle in front of us. How he holds that joint next to the side. How someone comes over and offers. How envy rises up in us. What buttons to push to make pride and ego prove that you're the man, you're the gal. He knows what to push. He knows what to do. And he's working even among all of our families and in these communities, what? Trying to draw us away from the truth. Trying to keep us from, trying to hold even now what I'm saying in a critical spirit, saying, why does he have to talk like that? Who does he think he is? How does he know that? And all of these devilish ways trying to speak into our lives and keep us from truth. Keep us in a life of impurity. Keep us in a life of sleepiness. Just go to sleep. It'll all be over soon. It sure will. For you. You don't want to grow lazy, but instead alive with the Spirit of God. We don't want to be dead. We want to be alive. Don't you love it when you're around someone who's got spark? Who's, who's lively? You know? Want to wanna hang around today? What are you going to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? Want to do? I don't know what you want to do. How about we just... Huh, I'll lean on you, you lean on me. <laughs> you know, you go through the day. Want to go for a walk? Yeah. Just, no one wants that laziness. You try to have a conversation with someone. Yeah. But when you're with someone who's got a little bubbliness and a little spark and a little excitement and, and they're a little bit on the lively side, and now that doesn't mean we have to turn into caffeine freaks here now. All right? doesn't mean that we all, everybody has different personalities, but you understand what I'm saying, right? Then when somebody's all of a sudden got that spark where, you know, you're going to have a little get together. Hey, let's make sure we invite so-and-so, right? Spark it up a little, right? right? What, alive? We like aliveness. We like lively. People want liveliness. 
come to church? <laughs> right? Okay, everybody can just go quiet and dead. We call it sacredness in the religious world. Right? The Bible calls it dead. Dead. When, when someone's dead, how do you know someone's dead? Do you go over and check for death signs? Or do you go over and check for life signs? You go over and check for life signs. And if there's no life signs or li sign of life, we call them dead. We don't go over and check for dead signs. We go over and check for, is there life? Is there presence? Right? No dancing, moving. Is there anything going on that would prove brain activity? Is there anything going on that would show that the person has life, some spark of life, some ignition that would cause that person to start conducting themselves in their own way, consciousness, aware, being able to see, hear, all five senses kicking in. You know, no, nothing. We say what? Dead. What do we do with dead? Remove. Right? Remove. So, God says, you're dead. Removed. Life. What's life? Those who are not following the course of this world. Dead in your trespasses and sins are those who are following the course of this world. But instead, you and I have chosen, we have called upon, we have by His grace received His gift from God, his grace to empower us alive to the things of God. But he's writing to the church here and he says, and you he made alive. You once walked according to the course of this world. Obviously walking according to the course of this world, the, the paths, the streets, the avenues of this travel, the way that it works, the way that it goes. If we're doing that, we are operating our lives in the realm of death. Does that make sense? It also says in this world that it's according to the prince of the power of the air. There he is again. According to, in alignment with, in harmony with, in submission to, the one who is ruler over all things and has authorities over this world. He's the great influencer. I don't know if I believe in him. Just go pick up a few comic books. Look at just a couple of uh, cartoons that your kids are watching. Just look at some of the books that are out there. Just look at all the things. I was at a, a Barnes and Nobles and I'm seeing this lady in front of the occult book section. And she's trying to find some book and she's looking around and she's reading them all. And I went over and I picked up a Christian Bible and I brought you. I says, you need to be reading this. This is what you need. This isn't your answer. This is your answer. And of course, that's where you get the scowl and the look and the, and the, and, but it doesn't matter. This is what you need. You need truth, not lies. Because the whole world is under its sway. And God has brought forth and put forth His grace and contained it in the pages of this Bible. And He's taken that word and He's put it into your heart. What? To just sit there and do nothing? No, but to follow the course of holiness. Not the course of this world. To be under His lordship, His magistrate, His authority, His power, His influence. Which automatically means no to the things of this world. It says, I've been going down this road, and I'm not going to go down this road. I'm going to turn back and go. No, you're not going to turn back and go. You're going to get a whole new road. An entirely different road. New road. And that way is narrow, not wide. It's the way, and the truth, and the life, as we sang earlier. And his name is Christ Jesus. Just the other day, I was at the lake for my mom's birthday. We went to the lake and 75 years old, and we had a little cake there for her. And of course, I put all that together through Kara. And the... <laughs> <laughs> so... And I went in the water. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm kind of wading in the water, you know? Swimming like a 50-year-old, you know? <laughs> and all of a sudden, I realize, you know, my head's out of the water. And I'm breathing. I go under the water. I'm not breathing. I'm out of the water. Boy, I'm deep, huh? Yeah. I'm out of the water, breathing. In the water, not breathing. One, I'm in the water no matter what. One leads to more life. The other one leads to a quick death. Which one do I want? Let me see. <laughs> Seems to me it kicks in pretty soon. 
that there's one way that is good and one way that's not. It didn't take them real genius. I didn't have to read the whole Bible to know that. I didn't have to know all the theologies of the world. I didn't know to have to know all the doctrines. I didn't need to have confirmation. I didn't need to call for five or six people to come in from the seashore. I'd like three of you down and two of you up. I want to see what happens. I'm running a test. It was pretty quick for me to know that one is good and leads to more life and one doesn't. There's a course that leads to death and there's a course, a way of travel that leads to life. One leads to death, one leads to life. Which do you choose this day? Life is a good thing, is it not? Don't you want to be alive? Do, are you, are, do you want to be in shackles and chains? And, and do you want to be in prison and concentration camp and being fed just a little bit of nourishment and call it fun and joy? And you don't want to, I, I want all my, my buddies. I want to hang around with my buddies. You know, all the guys that are in the concentration camp with me, all malnourished, all weak, all full of depression, no joy, no peace, total chaos, living check to check, can't barely make it, marriage in trouble, always just barely screeching by, can't stand the word, don't want anything to do with church. Yeah, you've got a great life. Don't you want life, joy, peace, God come in, not only now, but in the ages to come, now and forevermore. You mean I'm going to be in a black robe with big beads with a hood over my head and just walk around and praise God all day long? Don't you have any idea? Don't you just see the color around you? Don't you see everything just teeming with life? Don't you just see all that God is doing and all the things in wickedness that people can do to have fun? Think about all the things in holiness that he has waiting for you. All of the things that God has, the whole ocean, teeming with tons of life and all different kinds of life. Think about all the things that he has waiting for those who love God. All we have to do is just stay above water. That's it. Stay in the course of travel that leads to life. That's what matters. Not according to the conduct of this world. Not according to the prince and the power of the air. The spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Now, pastor, that's a strong word. It says it here in verse 2. The sons of disobedience. You are either a son of obedience or you're a son of disobedience. You means you're either a child of obedience or a child of disobedience. It means you're either the, under the fatherhood of obedience or you're under the fatherhood of disobedience. That's it. We're either obeying God or we're in the realm of disobeying God. And if we're in the course of this world, we're disobeying God. Hence, we're going down under. I know. I'll just bring a scuba tank with me. I'll fix God. I'm just going to pick up one of these other religions. Yeah, see, that's your scuba tank. Make you feel good for about 30 minutes. Till finally, <laughs> gone. It didn't carry you. Dead is dead. Not able to go any further. But he who has the son has life. He who doesn't have the son doesn't have life. Dead. According to the course of this world, sons of disobedience. Verse 3, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves. How did we conduct ourselves? In the lust of our flesh. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh, the cravings of the flesh, the longings of the flesh and of the mind. Those longings, those cravings, those things that rise up. And you can't tell me, there's not a person in this room, including Gary Cody, that doesn't have cravings, desires, and longings for. Everyone has them. Why? Because we're still in this body and still reigns in its members. And it's still calling for, you obey me. I'm commanding it. I'm demanding it. Give me that beer. Give me that cigarette. Give me that drug. Let your pride protect yourself. You move this way. Don't let that person get in touch. Don't let that person get advantage of you. You take it. You want to get this. You want to get that. I want fame. I want fortune. I want wealth. I want this. I want that. Rises all up inside. Everything. All the course of this world. Desires and longings and needs. I want to be known. I want to be loved. I want to be liked. I want a marriage. I want this. I want kids. I want that. Want, want, want. Say want, want, want three times, it'll turn into a need, need, need. You'll convince yourself of it. Got to have it. Can't get by without it. 
the course of this world, flesh nature, longing to be in harmony with the prince of this air, the disobedience running in our members and our souls, wanting to just catch a glimpse of that gal on the other side of the fence, wanting to just get that little extra way of getting through the day, wanting to just make sure that we're angry and nobody's going to get the best of us. Yeah, you don't want to mess with me. You have any idea who I am? Yeah, you're about a 170-pound weakling. People, anger rising up. Foul language, coarse mouth, jokes, shows, music, all kinds of things doing one thing, drawing you down into the abyss of disobedience. And yet obedience keeps calling. Who is that? Christ Jesus. Even now you should be hearing his voice. Calling for you. Calling for me. Calling for us. Calling even, Lord, give us the north, the south, and the east, and the west. Bring them, Lord, that they might know you in spirit and in truth and worship you accordingly. Straightening out our homes, straightening out our marriages, straightening out our children. Stra what I mean straighten out? Yeah, all right, Pastor told me to take the belt down and take care of you. What are you thinking? All we're talking about is coming into alignment with the character, the conduct, and the concerns of the Lord. You look at those three verses and you'll realize that there's going to be three, three things. His character, the world, characterized by the world. You're either characterized by the world and the things of the world. The conduct, you walked according to this way. The concerns, the longing, the desires, the looking for. Character, conduct, and concerns are either of the flesh in alignment with the enemy, seeking to devour who you are, or your character, your conduct, and your concerns are instead saturated by the spirit of the living God. And you take on his holiness, his goodness, his joy, his peace, who he is in your life, his character. You start being characterized instead by his presence. Your conduct starts showing that character as you walk with him. Your concerns are no longer for the things of the world, but your concerns are instead for things of God. You become a seeker after God. It happens in your life and it comes forth because God has put something in you. That which is inward, your character. That which is outward, your conduct. And that which is toward, your cravings, your longings, your desires, your seeking after. Please hear me now. Especially those who maybe you want to tune me out right now. Don't do that. Inward, your character. Inward, your character. Characterized by the world or characterized by the Holy One of Israel. Your conduct, the way that you walk, will either be your character showing forth as being part of the world and the world will come over and pat you on the back and yeah, you're just like us. Or your conduct will be according to the Holy One of Israel, which the world will hate. And your concerns, what you're focused on, what you're looking for, your concerns. I'm concerned. My longings and desires are for all the things the world has to offer. I, I just want, I just got to have. And you'll find that it never satisfies. It's like the buffet. You go there, you eat like for an hour, and you walk out, and five hours later, you're asking your wife, what's for dinner? <laughs> it doesn't satisfy. It doesn't keep you. But instead, your stomach will demand and command more. Those drugs, that alcohol, that cigarette, that adulterous affair, that pornography, that TV program, whatever it is, that passion will want more and more and more and more. It will never be satisfied like the grave is never satisfied. The grave is filled and filled and filled and filled and it's never full. But God comes into your life and immediately you're satisfied with who he is. And all of a sudden you want more more satisfaction, more of who he is. And every time more peace and more joy starts flooding and flowing over your soul and you realize this is life. And death rises up and tries to bring and tries to draw you away through your cravings and your longings. And all of a sudden you realize that, that you have a choice. Choose this day who you will serve. I'm either above water or I'm below. I'm either seeking the Lord or I'm seeking the things that are of this world. I'm either in, lo in longing, in, in alignment with the, with the father of this world, and, the, and I'm a son of disobedience, or I belong to the father of heaven. Jesus said, when they asked him, teach us how to pray, he said, our father. My father will be your father. The father of lights. You'll be children of light. God's spirit is doing something wonderful in your life and in my life. He says that we were children, by nature, children of wrath. Children of wrath. I mean, children, aren't they just like loving? Aren't they just kind of like just precious? 
Yeah, usually when they're sleeping. <laughs> Children come alive, happy, go lucky, as long as they're getting what they want. You don't have to teach them. They're going to rise right up. How about anybody just take a little visit to the nursery and see? Two kids that want the same toy. Oh, that's okay. You have it. No. Grab it. Mine. Right? Immediately. Children of wrath. You don't have to teach it to them. Immediately rise up. Mine. Get away. Eh. <laughs> you don't have to teach it to them. Just let them just grow up. And it will just double, quadruple, multiply, keep going on. All of a sudden, you're going to have to bring cute at two and three. Wasn't that cute the way they gave me that? <laughs> Wasn't that cute? Yeah, wait till they're eight and nine and ten and eighteen doing that. Wait till they're 35 and they hear a preacher say something, they go, eh. <laughs> I've seen it. They have different faces, but that's what they do. Eh. Start mocking one another, grabbing things. Children of wrath, violent behavior, obstinate opposition towards the holiness of God. Obstinate opposition towards the holiness of God. We're born with it, we have it, and those that don't want God, you'll find that they're going to want the acceptance of man more than they want the acceptance of God. They're not going to look by faith for the acceptance of God for his holy attention. Instead, they want friends and buddies to say, hey, you're a good man. Hey, come on down with us. Why? Because misery loves company. Depression loves company. All of these things, sin wants company. Sin wants more and more people around them and supporting. Holiness is from God alone. And God will birth it in you as he has in me. And he will continue to do so. And he will make it come alive. We don't have to be slaves to a vicious appetite. We don't have to be slaves to a vicious appetite. Those appetites that demand you obey, command that you satisfy, you can simply say, I want Jesus, the Savior, in my life. And you, he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, who once walked according to this world, according to the prince and the power of the air, who once satisfied all of those longings, cravings, and passions, who once, who once, who once, who once did this, but now you're called to no longer. How can that be? God's grace has intervened. God's grace has been poured forth. The spirit of the living God has been poured forth into our lives. And all it takes is for me, for you, for us, for all of us to just testify that these are the days of Elijah. These are the days of Ezekiel. These are the days where we're seeing the life of God come forth. He's He's putting life into dry bones. He's putting meat back on those dry bones. He's calling them to be a body that once were not a body. And he's breathing in life that we might be the people of God giving praise to ones that we could not praise. Is anybody hearing what God is saying? Amen. This is life in Christ. That we rise up and become truly the people of God. If you're dealing with anything today, let it be this. Lord, make me thankful grateful that you have made me alive. I was once dead, but now I'm alive. I once walked according to this world, but you're straightening me out. Lord, correct me. Lord, instruct me. Lord, guide me. Take those old ways, those evil ways. I want to submit to God. I want to resist those evil things. And I want to turn towards God. Well, the world's going to hate me just as they hated him. Well, the world's going to despise me and scorn me just as they did with God. But when you see Jesus, when you see the wonder of it all, when you see the promises of God, when you see the rewards that he has waiting for you, when you see what's going on actually inside of you, when faith becomes sight, when faith, the holy thing that's in you, that holy word, explodes and is revealed and known for what it is, you will look back and be amazed that those things had even a play in your life. You'll wonder, how could I even have wanted that? How could I even have... That's how sinful and how weak the flesh nature is. Don't you yield to it. Gary, don't you yield to it. You guys don't yield to it. Let us not yield to it, but encourage one another to seek the things of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. This is a must. This is a must in your life. This isn't a, I think I'm going to think about it. Don't you think about it. You accept Jesus, the fullness that he has for you in his name.
Let your conduct, let your character, and let your concerns be for Him. Let everything inward be Jesus. Let everything outward, your conduct, be Jesus. And let everything that you're looking toward, where you're going, where your forward movement, be the kingdom of God. Let Jesus come alive in you, in His name. Is there an amen? amen. Would you stand before the King? I don't sense a leading to have an altar call, though I believe there's people in this room that should make one. Need to make one, and God has even more ever told you. But if you don't have this Jesus that I spoke about today, you know you're not alive. You know something's wrong. You're not where, I, where it should be. You're not alive. You've got more, uh, you've got a lack of life signs in your life. You're not seeing that godliness. You want it. You know it. You know something's lacking. I'm going to ask that you would just tell the person next to you, I need Jesus. Just tell that person next to you, I need Jesus. If there's anybody in this room, would you turn to the person next to you and say, I need Jesus. That's the key. That you would make it known. That you would confess with your lips. That you would believe in your heart. That you would declare that I need Jesus. And if you've heard from that person next to you, that I need Jesus, that you would pray for them right now. That you just put your hand on their shoulder and that you'd pray for them right now. That you would help them and encourage them. That you would help them and encourage them to follow after you. That you want Jesus. And those of you who have the Lord, you know you've got God. You know you've got the Lord. You know God has done something. You know you're born again. You know that the Spirit of God is there. You may struggle. We all struggle. You know, and you want, you're growing, you know. But I want you to testify before God, before His holy angels. I want you to testify before every evil spirit that is out there. I want you to testify to the people that are next to you. I want you to testify by a raising of hand and saying, I've got Him. He's got me. I've got him and he's got me. Would you raise your hand before the Lord and just testify. I've got him and he's got me. Now, here it is. Here it is. If you've got him, now you once walked this way. You once conducted your affairs this way. You once had a character that was according to this world, but no longer. Amen? No longer. Say no to the things of this world. Say yes to the things of God. Live your life today, now, and forevermore. Make those no's come forth and make that yes come alive. Yes to the Lord. Yes to the kingdom. Yes to His holiness. Yes to goodness. Yes to purity. Yes to that which is good, that which is right, that which is holy. Lord, we say yes to you. And we've testified one before each other, witnesses to one another. And Lord Jesus, encourage us now to walk by faith and not by sight. Not be like Esau who sold his birthright for a little bit of stew. He said, what is good is the birthright if I'm going to die of hunger? What a foolish statement. Lord, let us not be like Esau, but instead have that spirit that seeks after and wants the birthright and the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, let your blessing be upon each and every person in this room. Let your joy come forth. Anyone dealing with doubt and depression, Lord, I pray that your spirit would help them and encourage them to seek the Lord in prayer and read your word and come alive with Christ Jesus. Lord Jesus, if anyone in this room right now is having family difficulties, if anybody in this room is having difficulties financially, Lord, that we pray for your blessing to be upon them. Lord, that they would not be concerned with self, but they'd be concerned with the kingdom of God. If there's anybody in this room, Lord Jesus, in your name that is dealing with a physical ailment. I know Dennis mentioned it back. I know Kara's back went out. Lord, we know that you're the great healer and the one who touches. And so, Lord, we pray for your healing touch to come upon each and every person who's calling upon you and needing a touch in their body. Lord Jesus, if anyone right now has emotional instability, Father, that they would build their life on the Spirit and be encouraged by the faith right now in your name. Let your blessing be upon each and every one of us and our families. And help us to live for you now and forevermore till we all come to the unity of the faith and we see you as you really are. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome one another, greet one another, love one another in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord.